everyone. Just going to lower these. I'm going to be talking about increasing the discoverability of auction plans in our collection by enriching data in existing catalogue records. But firstly, a bit about the MAPS collection at State Library Victoria and a description of what auction plans are and why they're historically significant. We hold over 110,000 maps in the collection. The focus is primarily Australian maps, particularly those covering Victoria. Around 30,000 Victorian maps have been digitised and are available to download for free in high resolution format from our website. Maps are used by diverse groups, including researchers and professionals looking at the history of land use. Our extensive collection of auction plans are particularly popular with people researching land and property owned or occupied by relatives. It's also very common for people who have just bought a property to want to trace its history. From the late 1800s through to the early 1900s, land across Victoria, especially in Melbourne, was rapidly being subdivided and developed, particularly at the height of the land boom of the 1880s. To promote sales of these subdivisions, real estate companies produced bold posters and flyers featuring maps of the lots for sale at upcoming auctions. We refer to these as auction plans, but they're also known as real estate plans or subdivision plans. Most of the library's auction plans were donated by real estate companies from their own collections. The plans feature suburban areas that were typically being developed as Melbourne's train and tram lines were extended. Generally, the maps on the plans concentrate on a very small area uh, showing the location of blocks of land that was to be sold and highlighting some of the most desirable features of the local area, such as shops, train stations and public parks. Many plan plans are plain black and white posters showing only the date and time of the sale, the terms and conditions and a simple map of the subdivision. But others are highly decorative, featuring colourful illustrations, elaborate fonts, cartoons, and even verse. Buyers are frequently wooed with the promise of free train tickets and lunch under a marquee. They often feature exaggerated claims about the areas for sale, and the maps that illustrate them regularly distort distances to make the lots for sale appear to be closer to valued amenities, such as shops or transport. And sometimes the plans refer to railway stations or tram lines that were never even opened. There are a significant number of plans that have minimal information listed in their corresponding catalogue records. Jenny Gissing, a member in my team, has been working on upgrading some of these records since 2011. There are over 2,000 plans in this particular collection and she's worked her way through about 1,500 so far. She's got about three drawers to go. They can be challenging to work with as indicated by their in-house collection name, miscellaneous auction plans. Really a synonym for the too hard basket. The plans are stored in bags alphabetically by suburb Generally, every bag contains numerous plans and most have been given a unique bibliographic identifier but are bound with one barcode. The catalogue records contain a title, year, format and a few subject headings. Jenny has been unlinking the bound bib IDs and giving them a separate barcode. One barcode per item is now standard practice to avoid complications with retrieval of items for use. One barcode for multiple items means all the items have to be retrieved at once for use by one person and this causes problems if you have two people wanting to look at material at the same time. But this is a, a less of an issue as more of our collections become digitised. Jenny uses a template to transfer existing information from the original record. She then enriches the data by adding place names, publisher details, dates, street names and local notes. 
So this is the template. And this is an example of a catalog record before upgrade. Titles can be unwieldy, including street and dates. Streets are now inserted in a 505 notes field. And this is an example of an upgraded record. You can see a publisher has been added along with subjects and street names. Often street names change over time. When you see a street name followed by a different name in brackets, the name in brackets refers to the current street name. And sometimes additional place names can be added. For example, an unprocessed bag labelled Summers includes plans of Balnarring. So in its unprocessed state, this um, bag of plans wouldn't be findable by people using Balnarring as a search term. Jenny uses the Malways and Google Maps to identify current street names and place names. And this ensures that people will be able to find the plans regardless of whether they use a former, current or alternative name. If there's no date on the plan, Jenny searches digitised newspapers on Trove to see if she can pinpoint a date by locating a corresponding auction notice printed in the newspaper. There are quite detailed notes. Uh, the content surrounded by double quotation marks indicates text taken directly from the plan. Auctioneers are listed along with a note stating that photographs of the estate are included as well as a locality plan. A locality plan is a drawing that puts the position of the housing estate or land allotment in context by showing its relation to a larger area in the municipality. So this work is greatly improving the discoverability of these plans, but there are still ongoing fiddly problems to untangle for Susie Gearmans, one of our map catalogers. These problems stem from the variety of ways we've dealt with different series of auction plans in the past. There are numerous duplicate plans that were not identified at the point of cataloguing, so there are many duplicate records on the system for plans hold in multiple locations. This record indicates that the plan is held in four different locations. Sometimes duplicate items catalogued in separate records are inadvertently digitised more than once. There are also occasions when duplicates may f feature additional content. The majority of the auction plans we hold were originally bound in large volumes compiled by various real estate companies. And the plans were pasted into the volumes often multiple plans to a page, and sometimes valuable information is on the side that's been pasted down. Uh, but it's too difficult to remove the adhesive without causing damage. The plans that Jenny's working on are loose, and she's discovered duplicate plans with additional content on the back. And this content isn't visible in the bound volumes because it's on the side that's been pasted down. So it's, it's a bonus to be making this unique information accessible. The majority of catalogue records for auction plans are uploaded to Libraries Australia, so they're searchable through Trove. But the series of plans Jenny is working on doesn't appear on Libraries Australia unless there's a duplicate holding in another series. But once this project is complete, there's no reason why the records can't all be fed up through Libraries Australia. Many of the records have similar titles that can be difficult to distinguish. The items are only identified as different by the date. So the ones already uploaded to Libraries Australia have often been merged. There's now specific coding required to differentiate these and we have a procedure in place to ensure that records are loaded separately and don't merge with existing records. Another layer of complexity is that some of the auction plans sit in the pictures collection and if you refine your search to, ma uh, to um, specifically maps, um, the plans that are held in pictures aren't discoverable. So we've definitely made progress but there are still limitations. But that's the nature of data. It's never finished. It's a constant work in progress that can always be improved, reorganised and repurposed with the evolution of humans and technology. Thanks very much.